So welcome to another edition of All Up In Your Business. I'm Jay Sokol. The Culpepper family name is practically synonymous with the cities of College Station and Bryan. So those who grew up here, or at least have lived here a long time, like I have, are at least somewhat aware of the connections to real estate and development for the Culpepper family. So that's really an understatement. Culpepper Realty Company was founded in 1937 by John Cecil Culpepper, a year before College Station even officially became a city. So in an effort to get a little bit of history and to learn about the developments that might be coming in the future, I have two guests with me today. First, Jack Culpepper, president of Culpepper Realty Company. Uh, Jack is third generation in his family to develop, lease, and manage residential and commercial real estate in College Station and Bryant and other Texas markets. Did I get that right, Jack? Yes, sir. All sure right. Did. And also, Larry Haskins, general counsel for Culpepper Realty. Larry's the guy who I think uh, makes sure that everything is being done right and, uh, and it, all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and uh, also a bit of a historian with this company. So, gentlemen, thank you for uh, sitting down with me and doing this. Ah, great to be here. Good. So uh, I'm about to get all up in your business. Hey, sounds good. So where do you even start with the Culpepper family as you guys relate to this community? Jack, where do you start? So so our family really started, I go back and I think about my grandfather and his brother. When they were kids, they lived in Mississippi. And during the Great Depression, uh, they were with a big family and, and they couldn't feed everybody. So they had a relative that was a Baptist minister that lived in Cameron, Texas. So my grandfather and his brother both got a one-way railroad ticket to Cameron, Texas during the Depression to live with their family friend. So from there, um, my grandfather met a, a young lady who was a history teacher, a Texas history teacher in Cameron, and she had a little teacher uh, retirement fund, or I don't know if she had retired, but she had a little money and he talked her into coming moving to college station at that time to texas a m university area and investing in some rural land in that area because he felt like you know at that time college station the the university was focused on the welburn side where the railroad station was but he felt like it would eventually turn and flip the other direction because there was a new highway coming to town called highway six so that's right so some people don't know that the the front entrance of Texas A&M actually did face Welburn Road and the railroad tracks. Right. And what was it, horses or something like that were on the back side of the property, which is now where they were putting then Highway 6. So, yeah, you're right. right it was, right. was flip-flop back then. So, yeah, so he convinced her to do that, and uh, they moved to, moved to College Station and invested in some real estate there. And I think the, one of the first things he did was develop College Hills Estates, start building some houses and um and then the blue top tourist courts blue top what, what was that <laughs> what was that, that was like a, a little motel that was there and i remember my dad telling me stories that when he was a kid they still lived in cameron they would drive back and forth and uh he used to you know play in the motel area and my grandfather would be working on the property so where about was that? I think it was in the area, um, I want to say kind of around where Best Buy is. Oh, okay. Today, kind of in that area right there. And there was probably nothing there at the time. Yeah, I'm sure it was just a wide open field. And I'm guessing Highway 6 was a dirt road, but I don't know in the 30s, you know, if it was blacktop yet or not, but it was coming. So started out residential. And uh, then what happened as the years go by? So then I would, you know, he, he continued uh, developing residential subdivisions like um, Carter's Grove. And then they, there weren't any shopping areas and very little in Bryan or none in College Station, but in Bryan, I guess it was just downtown. Right. And so then he got into building some shopping centers. And the first one was Ridgecrest, which was, is still there today. It's a tiny little center kind of between Bryan and College Station. And I'm, I'm guessing at that time it was kind of on the outskirts of Bryan headed towards College Station. So sort of right around, if I'm correct, Texas Avenue, maybe north? somewhere in that neighborhood yeah yeah kind of like um uh i'm trying to remember the cross the cross street there i think it's somewhere around. sulfur springs maybe somewhere in that area okay yeah all right yeah and, and so i'm guessing at the time with with moves like that that probably didn't go over so well with those who were doing business in downtown right probably didn't yeah yeah i, I remember one big thing was the talk about and there was an, a newspaper articles about when 
I believe it was Montgomery Ward's burned down in downtown Bryan. I've seen pictures of that. Yeah, and then that kind of helped him get a shopping center going because they had to move somewhere. And so he developed, um, I don't remember if that was for Mannery Small or if that was the town, Townshire in Bryan, but that was a big component, which was just pure luck. Right. You know, or devastation depending upon which way <laughs> which way you look at it yeah yeah you know? yeah no but i i've i've seen photos that uh of the burned out montgomery wards and right. then uh and then when i got here in the mid 80s uh it's located in manory small right right but, but we'll get to we'll get to right. manory small we'll and that, that sort of stuff in in just a little bit i want to pull larry okay. in real quick when did you join the company larry because uh, I, I came in uh in the mid uh 80s okay uh so in terms of the timeline we're talking about you're not there yet but you're coming Texas real estate depression is what brought me here. Uh, people forget that uh, there were some pretty tough times in this part of the world uh, between, say, 1983 and 1992. Uh, all but two of the uh, local banks went under. Uh, you picked was, a great time to come come to town. Uh, Jack's dad uh, needed some assistance and still had some work to do, so I came up here and have been here ever since. Okay, so uh, so I get to press pause with you because we're coming back. So we're talking about Montgomery Wards and that sort of thing as we're transitioning through time. What? So we're adding shopping centers to the community, primarily Bryan, because it was it was actually a town, and College Station was on the rise, and and A and M was was growing, and so then when there was a need for shopping centers there. Um, my father was also coming on board with his with his father and uh, that's when they built Culpeper Plaza which is a more modern type shopping center we don't own that now but we developed that or he developed that so now for people who don't who never knew it as Culpeper Plaza that's where Coles is located correct, correct. yeah and uh, Chick-fil-a everybody Chick -fil -A. knows Chick-fil-a is. that's right Napa Flats that's a that that's really evolved over the last uh, last few years for sure so so color pepper plaza was a big deal i know right right and that was in the 80s and then prior to that they actually developed the first large grocery store which was the skaggs albertson's you know by campus on south college and right. university right so that was in the 70s and so i guess that was actually kind of the first large shopping center that was built in college station um, and it had the largest grocery store probably in brazos county Oh, I'm sure. Because it was giant back then. And I, I remember my dad telling me a story about actually picking up Mr. Albertson's at an airport. I don't know if it was Houston or College Station. He and his wife actually came to the site, and they went out to dinner. No kidding. Yeah, pretty wild. When, when, when that building was being constructed? I don't know if it was during construction or when they decided to select the site and okay. make the transact, make the deal. I don't remember what stage, but I know that he got to actually meet him and – he came to College Station. So by the time I got here, I remember the Skaggs. I remember uh, Mr. Gaddy's right. being there, kind of where Schlotsky's is maybe, somewhere yes, in that vicinity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and of course, IHOP was there. Right. 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 And, uh, and then a number of stores and a movie theater. And uh, isn't there a little trivia about IHOP, by the way? Yes, IHOP supposedly is the oldest continuing operating restaurant in College Station. <laughs> that is so College <laughs> like Station. like 1970. That's, I think it started. That's hilarious. Thanks yeah. to your family, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so keep on going through time. So, you know, my father got got him more involved, and um, and they got more into commercial properties. It was it was later in the '80s, and so they also developed in other communities through through Texas, small towns primarily. This is Ryan College Station is the largest market we have developments in. So um, stayed busy, and um, but we've been through you know ups and downs. Things got tough, like Larry was saying in the '80s, um, in real estate and Texas in general. Um, I can remember when I came on board in the late '80s, um, there was you know the real estate recession was occurring, and I remember making phone calls, cold calls to retailers, trying to recruit them to College Station, and when I said Texas, they would laugh. Great. because texas was down i mean nobody they weren't doing any new stores in texas none of the big retailers were for a long period of time so it was it was really slow and um thank thank goodness things have changed now so larry what happens when during this period that jack's talking about right around the time you come to town where were you focusing your energies and, and what was going on with Culpeper Realty? Uh, we were in, in a bit of a survival mode. Uh, one of the projects that uh, 
came out of that during these tough times, uh, what is now uh, uh, where the target is. And if folks will recall, originally right next to the target uh, was a small HEB, which they called an HEB pantry store. Right, right. There, you know, and uh, uh, that was when things started to turn around. Target basically would send somebody down from Minneapolis, and there were great folks to work with, uh, but they really weren't locally familiar, and they're saying, who is this H-E-B that wants all this stuff? Who the heck are they? They weren't familiar with, to them, they were nothing. So, uh, uh, but that project finally came together and uh, kind of the, 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 the end of it was when the Outback Steakhouse was put in. And uh, that was the, the, the final part. Uh, I always like to say that, that by that point in time, that site was so developed, all the plumbing was in, all the major grading had been done. And uh, they built uh, that Outback Steakhouse in 42 days. Uh, the crew that was assigned to it, that was, I think, their sixth or seventh of that same exact plan. And so they were fast and the site was ready. Oh, so I, I had no idea that amazing, went up that right? quick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's still, a, at the time, it was a Outback restaurant record. I don't know if it still stands, <laughs> but, but it went up in a hurry. <laughs> wow. That, that is amazing. So, uh, you know, so many of the properties that you're talking about that uh front to texas avenue mm -hmm. well texas avenue has been widened at least once maybe more which i guess encroaches on some of those developments how right. uh, what does that do for you guys uh if anything when you're getting little chunks of uh of your property taken away by TexDOT dot to to accommodate more traffic because it feels like out back, it, the front door is right on the road. It is, right. but actually, uh, that, that was allowed to be built that way. Uh, the right away, right in that part of the city, was pretty well acquired. I'd say that you know our experience with TexDOT has been great. I mean, yeah. we've we've had a good relationship working with them with projects and and um, with the city of different city, but College Station, Brian. I mean, we've we feel like the process has gone well and people are knowledgeable and understand what we're trying to accomplish so it, we haven't had any really devastating effects or anything from uh land taking yeah. land for uh growing and, and growing is a good a good thing to have in in the real estate business and you're trying to sell more products and lease space so the road is widening there's more traffic there's more cars there's more shoppers so it's it's generally a pretty good thing you know so I want to pick back up, and, and I know this is moving over into the city of Bryan, but Mannery Small was a, a pretty revolutionary type of development by your family. Talk about that for a bit. Yeah, so Mannery Small at the time, I think it was uh, right around the early 70s, when it was developed, it was one of the few enclosed malls in Texas. And I know it was one of the certainly one of the few in our and probably in several counties around and it was a big deal i remember my dad said it was like in on the front page of some big texas construction magazine because it was like had all these tilt up concrete wall panels and and i don't know if you remember but some of the wall panels had um different variations and and looks to them and design so it was like pretty fancy at the time <laughs> Hey, that, no, but I, I, I remember reading that it, that it really was a revolutionary sort of construction. Mm -hmm. And and as the community evolved, um, obviously, Manor East impacted other retail areas in, in the community, especially, especially in Bryan, as things started moving away from downtown. But that's when I first got acquainted with you two gentlemen and, and with your dad. That's when I really first was around him. Uh, a bit when you were starting to make the transition, when you're announcing the transition from Manor East to Tejas Center, which was a striking change to a signature project by your family. So talk about that, because I think that, in my opinion, was a springboard to some of the newer things you've been doing. Yeah, that that was a, a great experience for me and, and for my father, because he was kind of on the tail end of his career he was older and I was I was a younger person and and so being able to work together on a project that he had previously developed when he was younger was was a neat experience personally but also to be from to have lived in Bryan as a young person and to be able to do something significant and improve that area um, personally was also really really neat and to do that with your father 
and he had developed it once and so we actually tore down most of everything he built but we were we replaced it with nice new uh, buildings and new businesses and and it was it was it was a neat experience i learned a ton um, we had demolition we had multi-phase demolition we had relocations we had new businesses it was uh, and we had a lot of involvement with the city and the community and uh, contractors we you know it was a uh, i was trying to remember i think i counted like a hundred backhoes on that project at one time from a redevelopment standpoint i've, I've had some people talk about the culpepper family and, and the company um in terms of that you're very cautious you're very measured and you you watch and you wait but when you finally find that it's time that you really move in a significant way and and that was first explained to me uh by somebody regarding manor east becoming tejas um and then uh even with the beginnings of what you're doing over at legacy point with the stack that that you guys are planning you're watching you're waiting whether it's market conditions or whatever but when it's time to to move on redevelopment you go right is that fair or right. no? no that's fair that's fair and you know, I'd, I'd like to say that's because we want to make great decisions and do things correctly but it's also we can't afford to make a mistake jay i mean if we we're small we don't have investors we're family we're a family business so if we if we make a huge mistake it's over yeah so we have to do it right we have to make sure the market's ready and we have to do our due diligence and line it up and get our ducks in a row because we we can't afford to mess up. Where are you the guy with the foot on the brake or the foot on the gas? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm the questioner, okay, but uh, uh, so and somewhat the skeptic. But at the time, uh, uh, the the conversion from Manor East to Tejas uh, was pretty. We didn't realize at the time it was pretty cutting edge. Uh, that process throughout the national shopping center industry is referred to as demalling. Hmm. And it is becoming uh, 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 a development specialty all on its own. So, what about what about you, Jack? Is your role as the guy who's pulling people along, or are you being pushed, or what is your natural fit with this company? I guess I guess in general, I'm an optimist, and I, and I like to see the the positive opportunities. You know, if you know, you can if if a big tenant were to leave a shopping center. You can get really down and go, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? We got this big vacancy. Or you can say, you know what? This is a great opportunity for us. We have the opportunity to bring a new user into this market that's not here now, a new business that can generate you know, great sales and provide new products. So it's just kind of, you know, is a glass half empty or half full? To me, it's half full. So are you okay if we, if we move back towards the uh the Northgate area, what is now for you guys Legacy Point? Certainly. Because Northgate has has changed so much in recent years through the growth of Texas A&M and College Station and then the southern part of Bryan, but what we think of as the traditional footprint of Northgate really is not Northgate anymore. It extends so much further to the east. Talk about what your development's um, significance is and will be as you see it uh, to Northgate and to that portion of town. So you're right. I mean, Northgate is really transitioning over there with, with all the new high rises and the student housing. And, you know, Texas is transitioning. Our community is transitioning. And it's it's been so exciting to see that and to see this new project that uh, Midway Company put in, you know, Century Square. Right. And to see that success, a mixed-use project in our size community is extremely rare. I don't know if people realize this, but a true mixed-use project like that in a community our size is very unusual. And so these guys are experts. They did a tremendous job, an excellent project. But and they, and they also pioneered that in our market. So we see the success that they're having. We know that College Station can support it. It looks like it, ha it has been. It is. And so that gives us opportunity to to continue that success and we look at our track across the street as that opportunity to continue that success that they're pioneering and to develop something that would be complementary to what they're doing and also mixed use 
and we want to we want to really bring in we, we, we want to tie in the Century Square people that visit that the Northgate patrons the students the residents of Bryan and College Station we would like to incorporate all that into into our project and and have it complementary so that's a challenge we are we're from this market we feel like we can make it special uh, for our market and for the people here and we want it we want people to feel like this is ours right this is our place this is college station's place this is a special area of town and we feel that and we want everybody to have that sense when they come to our project so I imagine most everybody uh, looking at College Station as a place to possibly develop. They all want to be across the street from Texas A&M, I would, I would assume. So with you guys having land across in there, I can't imagine the kind of inquiries you're getting um, because I'm sure a ton of folks are, are asking the what ifs. But even if you're not naming names, what kinds of um, businesses, companies are talking to you guys about the what ifs for such an interesting piece of real estate with such proximity to Texas A&M. You know, we we feel like there's a need for restaurant and retail entertainment. I would say entertainment and restaurant are probably the most sought after desired products for that area because you have a large student population. That's your driver for those businesses, um, entertainment, entertainment and restaurant. And the retail component is would also be a part of that. Um, we also have office users that we feel like there would be a need for some of that, especially being right next door to Texas A&M. Having it, um, the available, availability to walk, ride your bike, um, live in that area now with all the student housing. There's so many more people that actually live there that can come down out of their apartments and maybe buy groceries. Right. You know go have a nice dinner or, um, you know, do a little shopping, relax, you know, with some entertainment, some live music or those type of things. So a a grocery store, a major grocery store worked there at one time. You think there's there's room for some kind of presence in a future phase of Legacy Point? We would we would love to see a it would probably be some kind of a smaller student oriented grocer. We would love to see that in that center. We feel like there's a need somewhere in that Northgate area, whether it's our project or Century Square or maybe another area in Northgate. The need the need seems to be there and it's going to grow. So, um, so yeah, we'd we'd like to do do something like that or have someone else do it is fine too. Just right. in that area, it'll help. It'll help us all. It'll help that whole area right there to have that availability. Do you guys plan on doing this phase by phase? Because I don't recall how many. How much room there is for future phases or would you guys are ready to move we're going to see that that whole site really come to life we've we've worked on that and we've had that same question and we're not a hundred percent sure but we feel like most likely it will be all done at one time because there's so much work and so much infrastructure that would have to be done that's going to be difficult to to structure it in two phases so most likely it'll be one one phase what do we need to do about transportation over there? Moving people uh, around more efficiently, safely, and, and I guess if we're talking about whatever your future holds, uh, kind of commingling with Century Square across the feet. I mean, how do we how do we reimagine that? Area? That's a that's a great question. You know, what TexDOT has recently done in the City College Station, you know, improving University Drive and South College and making it more pedestrian friendly with the sidewalks on University, I think, is a big step forward. You know, trying to slow that traffic down on university just for pedestrian safety going back and forth from from campus to Northgate. And, you know, if we can continue that thought, you know, I think there's just going to be more and more pedestrians, more and more bicycles. In our project, we're going to have an Uber lane, you know. Um, we're going to be more focused on pedestrian traffic and less less on vehicles but there will be some vehicles and if we can tie in somehow the safety and encourage people to walk from our property over to century square you know if there could be a traffic light there or improvements to south college the median right now there's a lot of you know uh, bushes and things like that could that could obstruct vision just 
by people walking across there. So things like that, I think, would be pretty easy. And then um, just making it safer for people to walk back and forth and to go to campus and, and to Northgate. So if I could ask both of you guys to look in your crystal balls, and not just for the Culpeper uh, Realty Company, but, but also for this community as a whole, how do you see things evolving for for College Station, for Brian? Um, what do you see happening in the next 10 years, 20 years? I'm gonna take that one. Well, uh, right now, uh, retail, as everybody, it's, it's highly publicized. Uh, is going through a transition and that transition you know how that plays out will have a factor right now uh, you were talking about grocers they are having a hard time trying to figure out how to bring their product make it compatible with an urban area and we have an interesting twist here in that although we are starting to think of the Northgate area as being urban uh, when you're talking to somebody uh, from a large city and you mention our urban area, sometimes you get that same snicker that Jack experienced back when he was trying to bring retailers here uh, to begin with. But the feel here is good. But I'm very optimistic and I'm excited about it. You know, College Station is the sixth fastest growing city in the United States. Feels like it. Yeah. So, I mean, we are we're growing and have been. And I, I don't see that changing. I really feel like College Station is just one step away from exploding. I mean, if we had, you know, one large employer, like when Austin got Dell, that really changed the game in Austin. Right. You know, if we had some giant engineering company that wanted to locate here or some big biomedical, I mean, we're on the cusp of really ramping up, guys. You ready for it? We're already ramping up, but I mean, it could really, I mean, it seems like we're, we're Austin like 30 years ago. I mean, or 25 years ago, right before the big boom. Right. Are you ready for it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you and your family have done. Larry, thank you for being part of this and uh, helping College Station and Brian grow and stay current. And uh, I'm excited to see what's, what the future holds for you. But anyway, thank you for being on the podcast. Really appreciate it very much. Enjoyed visiting with you. Glad to be here. Glad to be local business.